from Washington, D.C., it's The Cube, covering Oracle Cloud World. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. We're here live in Washington, D.C. for Oracle Cloud World. The hashtag is Cloud World. This is Silicon Angles, The Cube, our flagship program. Where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. We're pleased to have Karen Sigmund, Vice President of the Platform Business Group at Oracle. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you. Um, great to see you again. Obviously at Oracle Open World, we talk a lot about the stuff that's going on now. It's all coming to fruit. Of, fruit is bearing off the tree. Um, give us the update. What's the, the update from your perspective? Obviously the cloud machine, the infrastructure's going very well. Oh Dave yeah. Dave Donatelli's got the range. He's driving a lot of good business. What's the update? Well, I think the big difference is, is that if you look at our portfolio, it's changing. Um, and we're expanding it, and we're getting more, we're being much more customer focused. So if you look at the overall portfolio, uh, the Oracle Cloud Machine is a natural extension to what we do today. And the business portfolio, how has it evolved specifically, uh, and what's the big trending item in the portfolio? Well, I think it's all about being cloud ready, right? So if you look at our portfolio, you go back, we build everything from the best of breed components, right? So starting with the uh, tape, to the storage, to the, uh, to, to the uh, networking layer, to the compute layer, to the operating system, to the database, to the application. Every one of those we build cloud ready. And so the, so what's happened now is we've just evolved that and we've taken that same capability so if a customer's ready for it today, cloud today or cloud tomorrow, they get that capability when they go with our infrastructure portfolio. So, big, big announcement today, the Oracle Cloud Machine. We heard it in Oracle Open World is the private cloud machine but you changed it to the Oracle Cloud Machine. Yes. Talk about the thinking behind that. Um, there's really a lot of momentum at this event behind the Oracle Cloud Machine. What's changed, what's new, what's different? Well, I think, you know, uh, name's a name, right? I mean, name's, <laughs> but the, the, the really, what, this is a whole kind of new category. Customer at cloud, if you think about that, when you look at everything we're talking about today, the Wall Street Journal said it best this morning, I think, when they said that we basically turned cloud computing inside out. Um, and and why, why, why did we do that? Um, it, the name is part of that. Because when you think about it, private, a lot of people think of private cloud as being an on-premise solution. And they think of public cloud as being something that sits in the public cloud data center. The Oracle Cloud Machine is what we're calling it now, is the capability to take that and, and, and both the public cloud services and put it with the machine behind the customer's firewall. Okay, let's get into it because it, it is on-prem. Yes. But, but the services that I'm layering on top aren't on-prem, they're in the public cloud. So what is this thing? This is a new category, or well, no, how do you guys think about well, it? Well, what we've done is we've taken that the software stack and the operational model, and instead of delivering those services from the public cloud, we're actually delivering it on your premises. So it's not that you're, you're not connecting to our public cloud, we're actually putting it behind your firewall and actually creating your own public cloud that's managed by Oracle. But you guys are managing it, right. Just Correct. like, the, so from my standpoint as a customer, it, it actually is public cloud, except that's I right. got some lights blinking. That's exactly right. Here in the corner. That we look at, you I don't mean, look at. <laughs> are you able to replicate, in, in Oracle's view, are you able to replicate substantially the public cloud experience with this new product? Um, yes, I think that absolutely. That is the number one thing that we can do is that you're taking exactly the same services, a similar price structure, everything's the same. The only thing that's different is that we're allowing you to um, put it behind your firewall, we manage it for you, and but, but the architecture is all designed by Oracle, managed by Oracle, implemented by Oracle. You don't make the architectural decisions, we do, just like in a public cloud. So if a, if a customer says, all right, Karen, how is that different from what other companies, vendors are doing? How do you respond? Well, I mean, it really is a matter of what your capabilities are. Because we have this broad portfolio that starts with cloud-ready, um, cloud-ready best-of-breed components, right? So everything we build in the stack, then we can then combine it with the with the um, with appliances and and, and purpose-built, fast, engineered systems. That's a, that's kind of a legacy. I mean, a lot of our competitors that are legacy vendors can do would say that they can compete in that area. Um, so if a customer is trying to make a decision, they'll say, look, I am, I have to talk to my cloud vendors for my cloud native apps, I have to talk to my legacy vendors for my on-premise architecture. 
what the cloud what the cloud machine does is that uh, what Oracle can do now is give you the capability to combine those two and be consultative and put the customer in the driver's seat. Customers are have to make a choice. Okay, but it's but there's a nuance here. So it's not people are gonna say, oh, this is just managed services, but it's not just managed services. No, right? no, managed well, services is totally that. different. Okay, so managed services is where you, the customer, decide on a private cloud architecture. You decide what you want in that infrastructure, you decide who you want to manage it, you decide where you want it to be run, and then it becomes, that architecture now has to be managed by you. All the changes in it, all the service catalogs, anything you want to change in it, you decide when and how and manage that architecture. You might hire someone to do it for you, but ultimately it's an architecture that you design and deploy and manage. With an Oracle Cloud Machine architecture, we do the architecture design, we do the deployment model, you get all the agility of public cloud services changing and being modified in your environment. So you get that benefit of public cloud change that happens and, in a public cloud And the cloud business impact of that relative to managed services, how would you describe that? That's eliminating labor costs? Yeah, is I mean, right? the, the, a couple things. The first thing is, is that the uh, client doesn't have to manage the architecture, they don't have to manage the uh, what goes into it, so they can take their labor costs and move it to working on application development, which is where their real business benefit is. Um, but also they get the flexibility of the future. They get that capability that you don't get with a private cloud architecture that you have to build and manage yourself. Yeah. yeah. Karen, talk about the Wall Street Journal article you mentioned, Inside Out was the headline. Headline says, Oracle's new service turns cloud computing inside out. What does that mean? I mean. Why, it's in quotes, inside out, obviously, but what does that mean for the customer? I mean, at the end of the day, what are they, what are they referring to with the word inside out? Well, I mean, because uh, people have historically thought of cloud computing as one of two things. You're either public cloud, and the public cloud vendor provides everything, and you have to connect to them, or it's private cloud, and you build your own architecture, and you deliver your cloud services for your client yourself, or, or with a managed provider. This is inside out because we're now saying you can take that public cloud provider and bring them right behind your firewall. They're now in-house. We can bring cloud, public cloud computing in-house. As a service. Correct. I'm going to buy a lot of gear, no rack and nope. stack, and nope. Oracle does the heavy lifting. That's correct. You don't own the gear, you don't own, you pay, okay. you pay just like you do a cloud service. All right, so the next question, uh, obvious question is, because you are out in front of customers, we talk about this at Oracle Open World, you're, you know, you're doing the product teams, you're also dealing with the channel, you're dealing with customers. So I got to ask you, since Oracle Open World, uh, till today, and even through today, what have you found to be the most confusing or misconception by customers around Oracle Cloud? Um, I think that it's only that it's just for Oracle. Um, if you look at the Oracle Cloud Machine, it basically offers an infrastructure as a service offering as a baseline offer uh, that you can deploy to use to run all of your workloads. It's not so limited. not just Oracle customers. That's correct. This so is cloud offering. native. That's correct. People who want cloud native, yes. AKA DevOps. I think that's the big difference. Yes. Karen, you got a lot of stuff in the portfolio, so, you know, and to, to a lot of customers, it's a complicated situation. Uh, it's like you've got a very specialized focus on solving problems with different types of products. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think when you look at it, as I mentioned, we have the best of breed portfolio where we build the stack and that's all cloud ready. Right. Because we also have a public cloud, then what we do is we can now combine those things into different things that make sense for customers. So we can take, a, we can make appliances, for instance, that are the easy button. So for a customer who wants to deploy a private cloud and they want to own the architecture, we can give them an Oracle database appliance or a private cloud appliance, which allows them to combine that with other architectures combine it together and build their own private cloud infrastructure and deliver those services. Secondly, then we have engineered systems, which gives you the ability to do things that are fast, right? So if you want to have high performance middleware applications, or you want to run high performance database at a low cost, we can do that with our exa-series or super cluster. And then we have the capability now with Oracle Cloud Machine to really um, to bring that all around. And now you can take that same capability and bring the public cloud services behind the firewall. And, and Oracle Cloud Machine is new, it's different, it's not, not been seen before, sort of a new hybrid, if you will. It's very cloud-like, it's almost identical to cloud. The pricing model is, if I understand it, a subscription model for the infrastructure. Correct. The service. You've got to make a commitment for, I think, three years, yes. I heard this morning. Yes. And then the PaaS layer is basically- As you use as, it. Uh, by the drink. Did I get that right? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, and I think the other thing we didn't mention when we talked about this is this idea that you said hybrid. 
So Oracle Cloud Machine is kind of the ultimate next generation hybrid, but it's also, with all these other layers that we have, we also have the same ability for our client to have that hybrid capability and have exactly the same architecture on-prem as in the cloud. So we offer those as cloud, public cloud services in Oracle's cloud, and you can also deploy the same architecture on-prem. Mm -hmm. It's another differentiation for Oracle. Karen, I got to ask the hard question, so um, put you on the spot. Um, we have a, on a new coverage on siliconangle.com around data loss, and we've been documenting and publishing everything about breaches and security, and one of the things that's kind of embedded since Oracle Open World is, you know, security's always on, you got to turn it off, and that's the big Larry Ellison message, but there's a lot of breaches going on. We're obviously in DC where security is paramount. You got the government, security, um, data loss, breaches. These are, these are a lot of regulatory things that admit Xavier was talking about why this is so popular for customers. They can bring the cloud in so it's inside out because there's some issues. You got to make right. sure the boxes are checked. So you got zero data loss opportunities, DDLRA. Uh, we always talk about that in the last show. So that, you got recovery, you got data management, security, encryption on chip. That's all in the portfolio. That's hard to implement. What's the update on that? Is that working well? Can you add some color to that? Because that's on everyone's mind. Security, rolling it out in the enterprise. No, I think we're seeing, a, I mean, I think you, 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 we've seen a tremendous uptick in our ability for customers to want to take advantage of things like our ZDLRA product because that gives you that continuous availability of your database workloads from your Exadata platform or from any platform for that matter. So um, ZDLRA is a great example of where we, we've taken continuous availability beyond. Security, to your point, absolutely. This is, a, this is the ultimate in security. The Oracle Cloud Machine gives it, I mean, while we have a very secure platform in everything we deploy, this gives you the ability to feel that a absolute confidence so you can take public cloud services and put it behind your So firewall. no breaches on Oracle? No. No breaches, no security breaches you've seen? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay. No, don't, don't quote, I mean, don't quote <laughs> me on that, but no. I, well, you're live, you just were quoted. Yeah, uh, no, 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 but this no, is, no, honestly, there's absolutely no. this is what customers no really scared about. It's definitely. not just network security right. or encryption end to end. You got insider threats, the surface areas are huge. Well, but this is a key point, is that in the early days of cloud, people were so, yeah, you always use security as the number one concern, but I feel, I've always felt like Oracle security, throw in Amazon, IBM, whatever. Your security is going to be better than you know, my security, for, the, for most companies. Now maybe there's some large financial institutions, maybe the government, but for the vast majority of customers, the security behind Oracle is going to be superior in terms of the investments that you make, the skill sets yeah. that you have, I mean, the practices. I mean, the difference is that we have security at every layer. So when you think about it, we have it in our public cloud, we have it in the application, we have it in the database, we have it in the chip, we have it in the Part, we have it in the, every element, every layer of our stack. So when you're building an information you know, fortress, for example, you've got to think about how you do that. You've got to consolidate um, and... Uh, okay, final question. What's the most exciting things that, that you've seen? Obviously, Dave Donatelli's uh, in charge. A lot of exciting things happening um, since Oracle Open World. A, you know, a lot of action going on on the portfolio. What surprised you? What's exciting things popped out? I mean, uh, you guys have been working really hard. What's out there? What what popped out that you're really excited about or, well, or has surprised you? Well, I think the thing that um, is most rewarding, I'll say, and, and I don't, I don't want to call it surprise, but I think what I'm most excited about is this Oracle Cloud Machine is, is the ultimate. It's kind of like having, it's the apex of, uh, and it's changing the industry in terms of how they think about cloud computing. I mean, to be at Oracle yeah. and have all these elements and to combine it together, it's absolutely the apex. We used to call it the God box back in the box days. Now it's the God service, <laughs> right? The cloud, up in the cloud, up in heaven. Exactly. Okay, Karen, Thank thanks you. so much for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. Great insight. Karen Sigmund, Vice President, Cloud Platform, Business Platform. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back with more live coverage here in Washington, D.C. at Oracle Cloud World after this short break.